want to look at Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called uh, Beautiful, to ask um, alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked them an alms. In other words, asked them for a donation, for some money. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered, in, uh, entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this, or why look ye so uh, earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to war? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. That was Barabbas at the time. And killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot, or I know, that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all the prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you. Now, must understand that it's still the same, very similar sort of a message. We, it says here, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. See, God is able to forgive you of all of your sins. And that, that to me, is amazing. That is a miracle in itself. Realizing that the Lord can actually forgive us of all of our sins. You think of every sin that you've ever committed. And I, I bet you can't really remember them all, but the Lord remembers them all. And so we need to understand that we're in big trouble with the God of the universe. It's because of our sins. Now our sins need forgiveness. And how is that even possible? Through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he shed for us freely upon the cross of Calvary, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sin. So repent ye and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Yes, it's possible to have your sins completely removed so that you can enter into heaven. See, this is the point. God wants us to be in heaven, but we cannot be in heaven with our sins on us. 
In other words, without forgiveness for our sins. We need forgiveness for our sins. And that is only possible through the precious shed blood and the sacrifice, the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. Yes, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, whom God, uh, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses uh, truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made to our, uh, with our fathers. Speak to the Jews here. Uh, saying unto Abraham, in thy, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning every one of you from his iniquities. This is what God can do for you this morning, my friend turn you from all of your iniquities. We need to understand that iniquities are, are actually a bit worse than the normal sins. Iniquities is something that someone has sort of uh, mulled over in their mind. They've sort of meditated upon it. I'm going to go out and do this and, you know, and so on. So we need to understand there are degrees of uh, sin, of course. There, all sin is not equal. Some sins are worse than others. But the worst sin that you can ever commit, my friend, is rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what's so dangerous about the situation you're in if you're not a child of God. See, the Bible says we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So if you want to become a child of God, you want to be in heaven, you have to come God's way. And God's way is through the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by means of the crucifixion of Christ and your right response to that, your soul can be saved. Repentance toward God, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. This is God's will. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. As I said, repentance is a change of mind. Simply be honest before God. Admit the fact to him that, yes, I realize that I am a sinner, that I have sinned. But the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. And then when you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the moment you do, your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, and thanks for listening. Remember, but God commended, that means he exhibited or displayed his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us.